What's going on YouTube? So major things have been happening at the Buick brand, and that includes this, the Encore GX, the brand's bestseller. And we spent the past week with this bolder and more stylish offering to really put it to the test. So is this Encore GX Avenir an unexpectedly nice subcompact crossover for you? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Now, like always, let's kick things off here under the hood and talk about what you'll find under there. So for the 2024 Encore GX, you have a 1.3 liter turbocharged three cylinder engine on most of the trim levels of this model. It's gonna be making 155 horsepower, 174 pound feet of torque. It's paired to a nine speed automatic transmission in this op application. We also have front wheel drive or the option of all wheel drive. And as far as the fuel economy, we're sitting at 27 MPG combined by the EPA. However, we did have this for a full week and we will be talking about our real world fuel economy over the past week later on in the test drive. Of course, while we're on that test drive, we're going to give you impressions and get things like our sound level reading to see is, is this the quietest subcompact in the class? But first, let's close up the hood and take a look at the much more aggressive exterior design. So like I was saying, Buick has embarked on a much bolder styling direction, and this Encore GX is one of the first models to get this new design. It's inspired by the Wildcat concept that you saw a little while ago. And as you can see, totally new look. We have an updated fascia through here. We also have new lighting, which I'll talk about in just a second. But in terms of your overall looks, this is the new Avenir trim, which is the new top model that's going to give you some additional um, kind of pizzazz so you have a kind of chrome mesh that's going to run through here and then you've got the chrome surrounds all through there you also have an updated buick logo with the fang design now the lighting though is the boldest thing that's different as you can see we now have separated housings so up here at the top is our led turn signal indicator and daytime running light and then down below we have our led projector headlight and by the way led headlights are now standard on every single model now when it comes to the rear design you're not going to notice as many changes as in the front but the new avenir trim does include some special touches yeah and what are those special touches let's go ahead and dive into that well hint one of them is the tail light and drew's going to go ahead and hop inside so if we uh, so we can see if all the elements are led that's something we test out here at car confection so we do have an led brake light led turn signal indicator and we do have an incandescent reverse light that's integrated down here so two out of your three elements are led um, you know that's pretty much a standard affair for this segment. I do want to point out though, if you choose the Avenir model, that's where you get the clear taillight lenses. We do have our updated Buick branding back here, Buick spelled out across the back. And as far as this lower diffuser area, we do have all of this finished in body color for the Avenir to give you that more premium look. We're also going to have faux exposed exhaust outlets on both sides, although they're not real exhaust outlets. Now moving on to our wheel options, this is another place you'll know this is the Avenir because we have the loaded 19 inch alloy wheels. This is the largest wheel in the lineup. And as you can see, nice kind of satin silver finish, which goes really well with the chrome that you have in the front. And then coming up here to our mirrors, we actually have standard blind spot monitoring as well as heating on all trims. Now here at the side, the overall vehicle length is gonna remain the same even despite the refresh. So we're looking at 171.4 inches long. And as far as some of those design elements that you might be curious about, we of course have chrome door handles for that premium look. And here on the Avenir, we have a satin finished roof rails up top. If you choose the ST, you will also get roof rails as well. Now, one of the other things that I'm very impressed with that Buick is offering on this vehicle is actually all three out of your four active safety features as standard equipment on all trim levels. And you additionally have the option of getting adaptive cruise control on all of the models as well. But guys, there's an updated cabin inside with a lot of new technology. So let's check that out. But first, if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our car confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now let's go ahead and move on to the interior. First as always, we'll take a quick look at the key fob. Typical Buick affair, you do have remote start built into the smart entry fob. And to get inside, just press the button right there and that will unlock the door. 
Now, taking a look inside the cabin, you're gonna notice some pretty big changes from the pre-refresh, just like with the front end design. Before we get into those enhancements, especially in technology, let's talk about cabin uh, material and color choices. So we're starting out with a cloth seat. You move to a leatherette seat on the ST, and then the Avenir is going to get this right here. This is the exclusive real leather seat. And as you can see, it does have a special uh, design running through it. So you've got the stitching details that run through the center, you have the color contrast piping, and you even have Avenir up there in the headrest. Overall, very nice looking seat. It's also quite comfortable to set in, and you can get that in this black or a beige option if you prefer. In terms of the seat adjustments, 10-way power is going to be included here on the Avenir, and we also have two two-way lumbar, excuse me, and two person memory seats located up there on the door trim. But let's go ahead and climb inside. Now that we're inside, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the cabin materials. We'll start out over here with our door trim. As you can see, this is all gonna be finished in the leatherette with the stitching detail that runs through there. We are gonna have a soft touch plastic running across the top part. As we move to the upper dash, all of this will also be a nice soft touch plastic with a stitching detail. We have a kind of faux aluminum trim through the center, a nice leatherette material that runs through this section, again with a stitching detail. And then the final bits down here at the bottom will be mostly piano black, and then it will be hard touch through here, but everything feels very, very solid and well put together. Now we'll fire it up with our push button start. And let's go ahead and get into the first tech upgrade for this new model right from the start. So you'll notice as we come into our gauge cluster, we have an eight inch digital gauge cluster. And this is now gonna be standard on every single version as part of the larger display system where it all kind of seamlessly blends together with this unique wraparound shape. I'll talk more about the main screen in a little bit, but just know for now that is standard and it does have some unique and kind of premium looking graphics for this model. Now, as you pull back to the steering wheel, we've got a nice leather wrap steering wheel. We have the double stitching detail for the leather wrapping. It is gonna be heated as well on the Avenir and manual tilt and telescoping across the entire lineup. Now, this is a relatively small crossover, but we need to check the interior storage to see if you're gonna have plenty of space for all your stuff. Here at Car Confections, we like to do a thing called the donut to test because that is our emblem. And we went ahead and filled up the center console of this Encore GX with nine donuts. So that's pretty good. Even though this is narrow, it's actually quite deep. You also have another pretty sizable storage cubby in front of that. Great for storing a cell phone. You have your two cup holders. And then you're also going to have wireless phone charging up there in the front, standard on all trim levels. Now pulling back to the shifter, this is a traditional style shifter. Pull back for drive. You can shift manually with these little toggles on the side of the shifter. And when we go into reverse, we'll find a nice premium feature for this segment of vehicle, and that is a 360 degree camera system. This is going to be optional on the Avenir, and as you can see, you have a lot of different views that you can choose between. And overall, the resolution is quite nice. Of course, P is for park, and you have your electronic parking brake located right behind there. Now, as we move above that, you're going to find another very nice and premium looking panel. This is going to be our dual zone climate system here on the Avenir trim. The other models will have a single zone climate, but I really like the way they've laid this out. Nice, easy to use and premium feeling toggles. Everything's centrally located. You also have three stage heated seats as standard here on the Avenir as well, and they heat up very quickly and very nicely. Now, Let's move in to this display and talk about this because this is a big improvement for 2024. It is a big display. This is an 11 inch display and surprisingly this is gonna be standard on all three trim levels of the Encore GX. As you can see right now I'm in the Android Auto interface and it is gonna be running wirelessly as well as Apple CarPlay. They all run wirelessly on all the trim levels as well. Now in terms of our audio system, we do have the upgraded Bose premium sound system, which is an option on the Avenir, and we'll give that a sample right now.
Overall, this is a good sounding sound system, really fills up the cabin well. Now rising up, again we have some surprising technology features. Not in the fact that this is an auto dimming mirror, but this is actually a smart rear camera mirror. So you can see out the back without any obstructions whatsoever. And you even have your Homelink Universal Remotes built in up there at the top. Now one thing we actually don't have on this tester, but you can get on all the Encore GXs is a panoramic sunroof. You don't usually find that in this class and it is available as an option to you. Now for a vehicle in this segment, you would expect it to not have a lot of space. And I'm happy to tell you that once you get back here, you'll realize it actually is pretty darn nice. Now, as far as those space figures, let's go ahead and talk about that first. Uh, we're sitting at about 36 inches of leg room, about 38 inches of headroom. So one of the things I really want to point out is that if you're picking between this uh, Encore GX and an Invista, you're going to have a lot more headroom in this version because of course the roof is a lot taller and not as sloped off. So just something to consider if you're a taller person and going to have people in the back seat very frequently. Now, as far as other things, I do want to point out that my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. There is tons of room, so no matter how big your feet are, they're going to slide up under there. And as far as our knee space is concerned, of course, I did bring my own ruler, and we're looking at about six inches of space between my knees and the uh, driving position of Drew, who's five foot eight. I'm five foot nine for reference. Now, as far as the features, we do not have vents on any version of the Encore GX. However, we do have quite a few features. Uh, we actually have a full household style outlet which I'm very surprised to see uh, on this model, as well as two USB ports for charging things up. We also have a center armrest that folds down to give you two cup holders inside. I want to point out, um, you'll especially notice that on a cold day like today, no heated rear seats are offered on this Encore GX. And turning to your door trim, it's going to be uh, mostly hard touch. You're not going to have the soft touch from the front, uh, but we do have a leatherette through all the middle and on the armrest portion, plus a bottle storage down in the bottom. Now walking up to the tailgate and cargo area, I do want to point out that you have a hands-free power tailgate on the Avenir version of this vehicle. It will also even display a Buick emblem here on the ground so you know where to kick. I'm going to go ahead and try it and see if it works. As you can see, it does work quite well. Now, of course, you can't see the uh, illuminated emblem unless it's nighttime. Now, as far as the uh, space is concerned back here, once again, a pretty impressive area for this model. 23 and a half cubic feet behind the second row seats. If we fold those seats down, we're going to be looking at about 50 cubic feet as a maximum cargo capacity, which for this segment of vehicle is a very good figure. It is going to be more spacious than the Buick and Vista, as you might expect. And I do want to go ahead and give you some of those uh, measures because I brought my my tape measure here. So from the rear of the seats with them fully upright and in position to the end of the cargo area, we're looking at about 32 inches of cargo length. And as far as the cargo width, we are looking at 40 inches wide. Now I am going to go ahead and fold the seats down. They do fold 40 or 60, 40 split, but there are not any handles in the cargo area. So I'm going to have to go do it from the second row. Okay, so now I went ahead and folded those seats down. It's not too hard to fold them. And I'm going to go ahead and get the measure from uh, Drew's driving position to the end of the cargo area. We're looking at 63 inches of length. However, that's not the maximum for this vehicle. You'll actually notice that the passenger seat is folded completely flat. And that's because this Encore GX actually has the functionality that you can fold the passenger seat all the way down to allow for longer objects to fit in. And if you want that measure, lots of measurements here. We're looking at 96 inches or eight feet of maximum length. So very impressive for a small SUV like this to have that much cargo length as a maximum. I imagine a lot of you guys will be definitely taking advantage of that. The cargo floor can be adjusted for different um, needs and you also have a spare tire integrated under there. All right, the time has come to go out for a test drive in the Encore GX. As always, we're gonna cover these topics. And the first thing we're going to do is start off with a hard acceleration. All right, there's 60 miles an hour in the refreshed Encore GX. Now, of course, if you're paying attention to the spec dump, you know what's under the hood. This particular model has a 1.3 liter turbo three cylinder. Um, and you might hear three cylinder and go, ooh, it's really gonna be weak and uh, un under powerful and all that. But actually, 
it's pretty darn good. So 155 horsepower, 174 pound-feet of torque. And really the thing I want to point out about that is that torque figure. 174 pound-feet of torque is very good for this segment, and it's certainly good enough to really ensure that you get that pushback in your seat feeling when you accelerate. Right, that's definitely a good measure for this segment of vehicle. And if you choose the base trim, I do want to point out you get a uh, slightly lower displacement 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder engine. Um, that's going to be producing about 130 horsepower, so pretty good difference in power figures if you go for a uh, any trim except for the base model, as a matter of fact. There's our rolling acceleration that was slightly downhill it's not quite that fast but um, overall I mean we've driven this vehicle quite a lot actually well over 400 miles in the past week because it was actually a Thanksgiving holiday so we were going here and there all throughout and I was actually very impressed with how this engine has performed over the past week. I mean, it definitely doesn't feel like excruciatingly slow and that is just so common in this segment just to feel like, ah, oh, go to 60 a little faster. And this really doesn't feel like that. I think you're gonna certainly appreciate this motor. And the noise coming from the three cylinder, I think isn't too bad at all. It doesn't sound too uh, unrefined. And it also doesn't sound very strained. Yeah, it actually has kind of a, a deeper sound to it. And uh, one thing we notice is when you're at low RPMs, it actually has this um, very deep, almost like vibration yeah. that kind of comes into the cabin a little bit. Like uh, it's an interesting sensation, but it is one of the unique characteristics of it being a three cylinder engine. Now, the other thing which Mason can demonstrate as we kind of take off here is the transmission. Most subcompact crossovers are going to come with the continuously variable transmission. Uh, we actually on board with this model though have a 9-speed automatic transmission. Um, if you get front wheel drive, you will have a CVT, but if you have the all wheel drive system, which is optional across the lineup, that's going to give you the 9-speed automatic transmission. I think this is the way to go. I don't know yeah. what you think, Mason, but this is probably the way to go. Just going to give you that more traditional feel. This is a good responsive transmission as well. It shifts smoothly, doesn't seem confused. And as we mentioned earlier, it's very torque rich, so you actually don't have a lot of hunting around in, um, for gears and stuff like that. And you know we're on a little bit of a twisty road here and if, while it's not the focus of the Encore GX, I do want to talk a little bit about the dynamics. Um, one of the things that I've been uh, pretty impressed by this week after driving it for a long time is actually the steering. The steering has a pretty heavy feel to it for a uh, vehicle in this segment. You know, it's not a BMW or anything, but it actually is very responsive and you can have a good sense of where the wheels are placed, which is rare in this segment of vehicle. Um, the body roll is going to be pretty much average, but overall the driving dynamics I feel like are pretty solid for this segment. Yeah, it's a good ride and handling mixture. You know, if you ever rode in a old Buick, you know it's very floaty. This is nothing like that, of course. It's well behaved behind the wheel like i said a good balance between having a good ride quality and having decent dynamics now speaking a little bit about the ride quality we're on a pretty rough patch of road we're going over some um, spots where they've changed the pavement out and it really handles this nicely this is actually platform mates with the chevy trailblazer which is a yeah. vehicle we got to test out last week and i think there's pretty substantial and noticeable differences between that model and going for the encore gx they've definitely done a good job of making this a much more luxurious ride yeah and i will also point out these seats are very comfortable over long road trips multi-hour road trips uh, these avenir seats definitely held up very well you're probably wondering um, what type of fuel economy would you expect from a turbocharged three-cylinder engine well happy to report pretty good fuel economy so if you choose the 1.2 that's going to be 30 combined if you choose the 1.3 you're still going to be sitting at 30 combined so power upgrade is definitely worth it with all-wheel drive though like we have you're going to lose a 3 mpg combined that's going to take you to 27 combined now we have like mason said gone on extensive road trip uh this week 
and uh, we can tell you what we have gotten and that is 30 miles per gallon even that's our average so as you can see we're actually even though this is the yep. all-wheel drive model setting above the epa rating i'm very happy to report that because a lot of times you'll see that something that's a really small displacement yeah. can underperform because it's very strained but in this case it is not and it is overachieving yeah, I haven't even filled it up on a tank of gas yet, um, despite all the driving this week, which I think is pretty impressive as well. The fuel capacity is uh, quite large on this model. And right now, our auto start-stop system has kicked on, and it went ahead and restarted. Overall, I've been pretty impressed with the auto start-stop. You can definitely feel when it kicks on and off. Um, it's not quite smooth enough that you're not going to tell, but it's also uh, pretty smooth, so I don't think you'll really want to turn it off, and that's honestly how we've gotten as good a fuel economy as we have been getting in this Encore GX. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also think it's a good time for us to go ahead and talk about our slam dunk and air ball after a week of driving this GX. We are gonna say the Slam Dunk is the 2024 upgrades. They've done a good job of adding uh, features that I think a lot of people are going to really appreciate. Obviously, this is uh, substantially restyled, so you have a lot more stylish exterior. I think the biggest thing, though, is the technology that's massively upgraded and standard across the board. So even if you get that base model, which is available in like the low or mid $20,000 range, you're gonna get a lot of technology. Yeah. And as far as our air ball is concerned, we haven't mentioned the price just yet, but this Encore GX is going to be more expensive than the new Buick Invista. So we sampled out the Invista in July of this year, and I really think that's the worst thing about the Encore GX is that vehicle is quite a bit cheaper than uh, this model as tested. Now, if you need all-wheel drive, you cannot get all-wheel drive on the Invista, so that's something to keep in mind, but fully loaded out, the Invista is sitting right around $30,000, and fully loaded out for this model, you're sitting in the upper $30,000 dollars so you're sitting at about seven to eight thousand dollar price difference and that's a lot of money especially when you're talking about a vehicle that's thirty thousand dollars so i think that's really the biggest con of this is the price compared to the invista of course you guys have been waiting for it let's check the sound level reading and see if this is the quietest subcompact at 55 miles per hour Alrighty, so that's going to be the end of our test right there. We got 58.4 decibels. Now, of course, we don't have to guess if that is the quietest subcompact because on carconfections.com slash sound level readings, we have all of this model's competition in a nice spreadsheet for you to compare if you want to. And when I pull that up, 58.4 is going to put that um, in the upper part of the segment. We're gonna be positioned between the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid and its stable mate, the Buick Invista. And the last thing that I do want to mention here is your warranty. You're gonna have a three year, 36,000 mile basic warranty, a five year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty. Additionally, uh, Buick is also including one year of complimentary maintenance. And let's go ahead and talk pricing for this Encore GX. Now this model is pretty affordable and this is pretty much a fully loaded example besides for the panoramic moonroof and we're sitting at 37,340 once we add in the 1295 destination charge. Now if you're curious about the pricing for the other versions of the Encore GX, of course you can get it uh, quite a bit cheaper than this version. It starts at 26,895 for a base model and the Sport Touring is going to start at about $28,000. And if you're looking to buy a Buick Encore GX or any new vehicle and you're a smart shopper, the next place you should go to is carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now on our website, we have a tool that will connect you with local dealers in your area to get you the best price on your new vehicle. It's also going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for dealership negotiation. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in our video description. 
And guys, that's going to be it for our in-depth review of the 2024 Buick Encore GX. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful, the next place you should go to is hit that subscribe button down below because by subscribing, you help get us vehicles like this where we can actually test them out for a full seven days and provide you those extensive tests of real world fuel economy, our personal opinions of the vehicles, all those things is possible by you hitting that subscribe button down below and giving us access to those vehicles for extensive times. If you're already a part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support because you do make this all possible as well. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies. Yeah.